Hey, Will, uh, Coach Kelly said there's a lot of guys on this team with battle scars from the previous season openers that you've played. What have you learned from those, and um, what do you take moving forward into this one? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of guys on this team, but not only the team, the coaching staff, that we haven't done what we've needed to do the first week of the season, not just since I've been here, but even years previous. And, you know, it, it's not a good way to start the season off. It kind of, you know, sets the tone the wrong way. And we know that we got to come out, start fast. And we can't take, you know, in the previous years, like we have weeks to build up to our potential. We got to come out rolling this year. And we, everybody in the building knows that. How has Tyree looked this week in preparation for the game and the amount of confidence you guys have if he needs to go? Yeah, I mean, Tyree, not only Tyree, but Paul Mabanga has been a guy who's made significant strides. Both of them, you know, have looked great throughout camp and only progressed, you know, and they uh, both are, you know, ready to play it, you know, whenever we need them, and I'm excited for them. Going to Vegas as a college kid, like, how do you set that aside and focus on the game? That's not what we're there for. We're there to play football. I'm not into all the other stuff. I'm only going to Vegas to play football. That's the only time I'm going to go to Vegas is to play football. Have you guys talked about that? Yeah, I mean, everybody knows that, you know, we're going there for one reason only. We, we aren't going to Caesars Palace. We're going to whatever the name of the stadium is to play USC. Just give me your thoughts on leading this one, you know, off with, with USC and the, the challenge that they present. Uh, kind of like you said, hasn't been great to start things off. Like, where's the mindset of this team going into this one? Yeah, I mean, USC is a good football team. And, you know, it's somebody who we're not very familiar with. Uh, you know, new defensive coordinator. You know, they got a bunch of new playmakers, and like I said, they're a good football team, and we know that we got to come out, execute, and, you know, play our style of football, and, you know, we think if we do that, we're going to be fine. Are you anxious to see what this offense is going to look like against somebody else? I mean, I know what this offense is. I mean, I know the type of playmakers we have and the guys that we have not only on this offense but this team. I'm just excited to go hit somebody different than my own teammates. Coach Kelly more than once has said the uh, some of the parts will be better than some individual pieces, and I guess he means maybe they won't, may not be a Heisman Trophy winner or something like that, but you feel like the offense can be just as potent as it was last year? Yeah, I mean, you know, any it does, like Coach Saban said it on TV the other day, you can shake a tree and find players in this state. I mean, it's we're going to reload. I mean, as much as we love Malik, Brian, Jaden, they're not here. And we can't make an excuse for ourselves because they're not here. Oh, well, we lost because we don't have them. No, we have Kyron Lacey, C.J. Daniels, Xavier, Nutt, like all the guys down the list, Chris. And we have to go and play our football, and all of those guys can take a game over. And we just got to go do that. So have you set any personal goals for this season? If so, what are they? Win a national championship. That's it. Uh, talk to me about C.J. Daniels. To me, he's kind of my sleeper, uh, a guy that can maybe nobody's looking at and, and kind of, like you said, take a game over. Yeah, I mean, C.J.'s been a guy who's came in and done nothing but put his head down and work. And, you know, he did everything he's had to do since he's been here. And I think, you know, he could be a big playmaker for us this year in the slot. I mean, and if he's got to go outside, he can. But, I mean, the way that he – approaches every practice, the way that he works, the way that he's applied himself, not only on the field, but off the field in the weight room, pushing himself. I, I'm really excited for him because this, this is opportunity that everybody wants, and he's got it right here in front of him. I'm excited to see what he does with it. And then just your tight end room, like how much has Mason improved? You, you came in with him, obviously, so you kind of know where his trajectory is, but, but also those young dudes. Is that something that everybody after this game is going to be like, yeah, I mean, I've said it before, we got the deepest tight end room in the country. And, you know, it's not only the deepest, but it's the most versatile. I mean, nobody else in this country has those three dudes in the same room. Nobody has a trade as green walking around the locker room, a Pimpton walking around, and a Mason, guys that can go and put their face on a DN, but not only blow the head off your best DB. So it really doesn't matter what you ask them to do, they can do it at a high level. If you could describe this offense in one word, what would it be? Uh, let me think. I'm, let me think of an appropriate word. <laughs> uh, I'll say explosive. Uh, you know, there's a lot of explosive playmakers, not only on the outside but the inside in our running back room. 
And, you know, like I said, we're going to run the ball. So, I mean, that's not something we're hiding or, you know, trying to keep quiet. I'm telling everybody right now we are going to run the football. So you can take what you want with that. And, you know, Caleb, Josh, Caden, all these guys, you know, they're all big, powerful, fast guys. And you know, I'm just excited for them. Emory said that he took pride in you guys kind of leading the way. Do you, do you feel like it kind of starts with you guys? Yeah, I mean, Coach Sloan has preached it, you know, ever since he's got, you know, the OC job that we're going to start from inside out. We know that we make this offense go. We know that we set the tone with the physicality, with the juice, because whenever we do it and we, they see us dogging people, trashing them in the turf, you know, they know that the tone is set, and that just gets everybody hyped up, and we know that we have to come with that every week. What do you expect from Joe? Um, obviously, you guys have been around him a lot. Like, I don't think he's going to change that much. But as far as game plan, game style, play calling, the hel is the helmet comms working? Like, are you, are you, all that's we haven't really talked about that a lot. Yeah, I mean, so I've known Coach Sloan since I was a freshman in high school, and whenever he was at LA Tech, and I can tell you, he has not changed one bit. He's a screamer, and he's gone. You know. He coaches his heart out, and you know you can't do anything but respect it for his love of the game. But the, the comps, you know, I'm interested to see how it goes because sometimes there's some confusion. But we'll see how it goes. It's going to be a little different with 80,000 people going ballistic, so it'll be interesting. But I think it'll be good. What are you seeing out of Nuss taking this team into a season right now? His first, you know, he started the bowl game, but. This is the first time start to finish he's looking to lead this team. Yeah, I'm excited for him. He's not, you know, in this era in college football, guys are just quick to pick up and leave if something doesn't go their way. And, you know, he's done the complete opposite. He's came here every year, put his head down, worked, and pushed himself to not only, you know, get himself better, but to help lead this team in any way he could, not even when he wasn't a starter. And, you know, he's waited his turn. I think he's one of the most explosive playmakers in the country, and I think that he's going to show that. And I'm excited for him, not only as a football player, but as a leader, because, you know, he takes pride and, you know, commanding our offense. And like I said, I'm, I'm just super excited for him. He deserves everything that's about to come his way. What do you see in that SC defense? Anything you guys like, aren't really accustomed to? Yeah, I mean, they, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say accustomed to. I mean, we've been playing in the SEC, you I mean, you see literally anything you can draw up on a whiteboard. So, uh, you know, they got a bunch of playmakers, like I said, a bunch of guys who, if we don't take care of our business, that are capable of beating us and, you know, embarrassing us. So we know that, you know, in our preparation, we have to be very detailed with what we want to do and what we're trying to do as a collective. And we have to execute. That's the biggest thing for us. We have to execute what we're doing and then the rest takes care of itself. Like where this, do you like where this is at, kind of with this team, people not really knowing what to expect out of it, you know, and can they keep it up kind of thing? Do you like I that? like the underdog. I'm going to take him every time. Nobody's expecting what they're about to see on Sunday night. And, you know, we're excited for it. Everybody in this room knows. Everybody in this building knows what we have in here. And I don't think a lot of the country knows what we have in here. And, you know, like you said, I, I'm, I want people to be like that because then they're going to be like, uh Whenever it happens, we're going to be like, yeah, that's what we expected. John, last one. Uh, Coach Kelly has said in the past that you're a man of few words, that you don't talk a whole lot. But it seems like that's changed maybe here in August. You've had some of the best interviews, I think. The, that that sound bite you gave about 10, 10 wins gets people fired and all that, that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> are, are you being more outspoken now as, as a third-year guy? And yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say, like, I mean, I always will talk in the interviews, obviously, because I got to answer questions. But, you know, growing up, I was never a guy who, you know, wanted to, you know, be the rah-rah guy. I kind of wanted to lead by the way I work, the way I push myself, the way I approach every day. And not only that, but the way I play, the way I set the tone on the field. And, you know, I knew the next step for me as a leader and this team was for me to become more vocal. And, you know, I still, you know, I'm not going to be a rah-rah guy every day, but whenever I do say something, people need to listen because I'm not going to say something if it doesn't need to be said.